Now, Mark, tell the good viewers what you just told me about Jesse Plemons. Well, um, one of the main characters in this movie is played by Jesse Plemons, so he comes on screen and I'm like, huh, that kind of looks a lot like me, actually. And then I was trying to remember where I'd seen him before, and I took out my phone, looked through cast, I was like, Jesse Plemons, oh, Breaking Bad, right, he's a uh, Todd Alquist in Breaking Bad, which is where I knew him from, so... Then Vitas asked me if I would like him to play me in my autobiography, and I said, well, by the time I have an autobiography, he'll probably be too old, so. All right, well, we just saw Judas and the Black Messiah, which is directed by Shaka King. I believe so. Yeah, and it stars uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, and some other people, and it's based on actual events, or inspired on actual events, at least, about, uh, like, a time period after the civil rights movement, after Martin Luther King was murdered, after segregation was over, yeah, I mean, and uh, it's basically the foundation of the Black Panther Party, mm. more or less. Well, I mean, it's by the time, by this time the Black Panther Party's kind of in full swing. Like they'd already had Huey Newton had already gone to jail and stuff like that. Yeah. So, <sighs> what were your expectations going into Judas and Black Messiah, Mark? Well, I don't know. I think they were about the same. I just didn't really know what to expect because. It's like, I know, you know, I know a little bit of the overview of the history of the Black Panthers, but not so much about, like, the individual people who were involved, but if you, like, if you study the organization, even as just an overview, the name Fred Hampton comes up a lot, so that's, that's why the movie's about him. Yeah, I feel like this is a time in American history that's rather overlooked, because we all know about Martin Luther King and, you know, how African Americans became freed. A little, a little... I don't, I don't think this is going too far, but um, I think it's because Martin Luther King has been very, very sanitized mm -hmm. to the point where it's like he's kind of like something everybody can agree on. And I think if he lived today, yeah, if he lived today and said the exact same things he said today, I think a lot of people would hate him. Yeah, Who that's fair. now say they love him because it's like we, we're not really told the truth about all the things he said. The, the Black Panthers were, there was the Black Panthers, then later came the new Black Panthers. The Black Panthers were originally not a hate group towards, like, white people or Jews or whatnot. They were just a party for African Americans. Yeah, and basically a very, a far-left party for, yeah, to basically mobilize the black working class. That was their stated goal. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, I was pretty excited going into this film. I, I saw a trailer. It was Daniel Kaluuya absolutely nailed it in Get Out. So so did Laurel Howery, who's not in this movie too much, but when he is on screen, he, he gets a spotlight. And like Keith Stanfield is in his film as well. He was in a uh, Sorry to Bother You, which is my pick for the most underappreciated movie of the past decade. I'll, I'll check that one out. It's an indie film. It's directed by Boots Riley. Oh my gosh, it is hilarious and really just blew my expectations out of the water. But yeah, I was looking forward to it. And you know, Black History Month, and it's you know, <laughs> a movie about uh, African Americans. If you decide to see this film, I just encourage you guys to go with an open mind because I do touch base on police brutality, capitalism, things like that. I won't be going my opinions on those for this review, but just, like, go on their open mind. And uh, I will say the pacing for the first half of this film is kind of slow and hard to sit through. It's like, the second half of the film is more engaging. I found it to be more, I guess, uh, gripping than the first half. So it's kind of like when you're eating a piece of steak, you have to chop, and they have to cut off, like, the fatty bits before you can eat, like, the, the juicy lean stuff. Okay, sure. Um, my objection was, again, all the good stuff is the same as what Vitas said. Again, this is more a personal preference, so I can't really tell you if this makes the movie good or bad, but do uh, touch a little bit on the Rainbow Coalition, which was, like, a coalition of different left-wing groups in Chicago that each were, like... So we had, like, the young patriots were fighting for essentially mobilizing like the the Appalachian, Appalachian the white Appalachian immigrants to Chicago and then we had the uh, young lords I believe sorry if I get that wrong who were basically Puerto Rican immigrants and they were fighting for the rights of Puerto Rican poor Puerto Rican immigrants and it's touched on in the movie but it's just really gone by very fast I wish they'd done more with that because I think that's very fascinating and I almost just wish it had been had had a little more history and a little less character conflict the action scenes where there's like shootouts between the gang members and police officers I thought that was very well executed yeah definitely the there was there's a lot of shooting and that's that's how it was like that's all very true to life there was a lot of 
shootouts between the party members and the police. Also, on a technical perspective, like the last four minutes of the movie are just kind of inner titles explaining the historical context, and I don't think that's great. Like, sure, it helps, but it's just kind of like there's like a lot of it, it almost becomes too much. It's like it's like, why can't you show us this instead of just telling us straight up? Yeah, that's a lot of, like, movies, like, inspired on actual events, a lot of movies like that do stuff like that at the end of the movies, and I get it, you know, you can't have everything included in your movie, you know, for budget reasons, you know, for, for actors and, like, special effects and blah, 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 but yeah, it, that, it would have been nice to actually see, like, the film, what was going on instead of, you know, just have it, like, you know, tell us. It's not like film as a visual medium or anything. Yeah, I just I just don't think that part was done very well. Does this movie, I, I don't know, I feel like you, you, you see movies like this and it's like, oh, this is just Oscar bait, right? Because even movies that come out in February get nominated for Academy Awards. Yeah. I think, are, the, are the Oscars even happening this year? I'm assuming they're going to find a way to do it. No, it seems not. Yeah, with COVID or whatnot, but we'll see how it plays out, I guess. I mean, I could see this film, like, you know, the yeah, performances are very yeah. spot on from everyone in the cast. It certainly has the characteristics of Oscar bait. And that's probably what it is. Like, I can't really think of an objection to it. I can't really think of any, like, fresh, bold takes. Like, last year we saw Parasite, and oh, that's different, obviously, because it's... Well, is it? Like, I don't know. Paras- is it what? Par- I, I feel like Parasite's a little bit different just because it, it is so... It, it's just... It's just so different from everything we've seen before. Yeah, exactly. It's like, safe. it doesn't take... Yeah, and I think also Parasite just deals with some truths that we're not super comfortable with. Yeah, like, from a Korean perspective, nonetheless, exactly, that exactly, was really, so. like, insightful, like, you know, because I think anyone, regardless of your nationality or ethnicity or color or whatever, can, like, connect with that film on some level. Yeah, exactly. The satire that provides. Well, this film... Not so much. Yeah, and they didn't. I noticed that they didn't touch on class as much in this movie. Like, definitely not when compared to Parasite. Like, there was a little bit, but not not a whole lot actually. I noticed that. Yeah, this is more like a character piece rather than. Yeah. Funny thing is, like last year when we uh, were driving to see uh, Parasite, I was talking to Vitas a little bit about the young Patriot Sorg that worked with the Black Panthers. So it's <laughs> kind of funny that that came full circle. All right, uh, is there anything else we can say about Judas and Black Messiah without spoiling it? Um, no, I guess not. I mean, it was supreme. It was well acted. I think it was a good. Um, I think it was a pretty well well done. I don't have much else to say. Just I think I've said everything. Yeah, it's like, yeah. And honestly, this film isn't that. It doesn't have that much they haven't seen before, but it was. It was very well done, nonetheless. I'm going for a 7 out of 10 stars. Yeah. Um, I, I might even go 8 out of 10. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Zero uh, to Black West Side is a pretty decent film, and you guys should check it out. I mean, if you can, that is. I don't know if this movie's available. It is, it, is on, it is on HBO Max instead of... Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could have bought my sister's HBO Max. I, I have Max. HBO Max. Oh, really? Yo, yo, we have HBO Max. I didn't know. I'm sorry. No, no, it's cool, because like, I, st- I still have AMC gift cards from... Christmas of 2019 that I'm still trying to get rid of because AMC is doing terrible right now with stocks. Yeah, actually, uh, I got on that band. I got on that AMC stock bandwagon, and I think I actually lost about ten dollars. But yeah, it, it was... same with GameStop yep. too. Like oh, GameStop, oh, I, like... I I also got on the GameStop bandwagon a little bit, and actually, I bought like I bought like three hundred dollars worth at like seven thirty eight one morning. And I sold it two minutes later because that's how fast it was dropping. <laughs> Game stunks. <laughs> yes. All right. Anyway. Well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, so, so there, that will completely date this review. Like, like that, that that will be ancient history in three months because considering everything else that's happening in the world right now, events events become outdated very quickly. Yes. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Don't forget to tackle Mark by subscribing. And yeah, stay beastly.